How's it going everyone? I'm Cinders in Ashes UK, but feel free to call me Cinder. If you were to ask me as a kid who my favourite character in Thomas and Friends was, I would have said James without hesitation. Back then, it was mostly a combination of nostalgia and the fact that James was painted in my favourite colour, which made him stand out a lot more from the other engines of the show, since most of them were depicted in blue and green. To this day, James remains one of my all-time favourites, and for numerous reasons, one of which being the fabled James trilogy, which is going to be the subject of today's video. So who is James, and what is the James trilogy? James is a mixed traffic engine who works on the island of Sodor. He is known for his bright red paint, and is also known as one of the titular three big engines, alongside Gordon and Henry. In terms of his personality, James is most well known for his vanity, stemming from his magnificent paintwork. He can also be quite arrogant on occasion, and grumbles when assigned to jobs that he doesn't like. On the flip side, however, he is often shown to work very hard, and he is also a comedian, often cracking jokes at his friends. He's basically the class clown in this sense. Gordon doesn't have to go as fast as a jet engine, he's a steam engine! But he's still full of hot air! You're a pouty puffer, Percy. No, I'm not! Pudding, Percy! <laughs> he can also be quite the determined engine when he wants to be, as briefly shown in episodes such as Duncan's Bluff and James Goes Too Far. While these episodes do show a multiple layers of his personality, the James trilogy itself perfectly encapsulates all of his central qualities. As for the James trilogy itself, it falls in line with several other multi-part stories that were seen in the original Railway series and the classic seasons of the TV show. While details from episodes would often cross over into one another, the multi-part stories were always leagues ahead for how they told one singular narrative over the course of multiple episodes. Usually they would be depicted as two-parters. The two-part episodes usually followed a theme, an engine makes a big mistake, or something bad happens to them, then in the second episode, everything gets put right. The James trilogy also does this, but even better. How might you ask? Well let's take a look at the episodes and find out. So this trilogy starts with James and the coaches, then is continued in troublesome trucks, and concludes with James and the express. So here's a quick rundown. In the first episode, James returns from being mended after having a horrible accident on his first day. He's told that he's well suited to pulling both trucks and coaches, but still has lots to learn. While waiting at the platform, the passengers crowd round to admire James' paintwork. In a moment of uncontrollable vanity, James ends up letting off steam, showering the fat controller in water and ruining his new top hat. James then rushes Edward and the train out of the station before he can be told off. This also causes them to overshoot the first station. At the end of the journey, we can see that James is nervous, because he knows that he's going to get in trouble, and he does. The next day, Sir Topham Hat threatens to replace his red paint with blue if he doesn't learn to behave. This puts James in a bad mood for the rest of the day, which is only worsened when nobody comes to admire him this time. As a result, he ends up mistreating the coaches, bumping and banging them, he ends up damaging them to the point that he causes a leak in one of the brake pipes, which forces the train to stop until it can be fixed. Embarrassingly for James, it ends up being fixed with a pad of newspaper and a leather bootlace belonging to one of the passengers. The episode ends with James to have seemingly learnt his lesson, but he is yet to make up for his mistakes. Several days have passed by the time of the second episode, and we see that James has been punished for his previous actions off screen, having been left in the shed. We see here that he is incredibly sorrowful over what he's done, even to the point where we see him crying, which is something we only ever seem to see in the first two seasons of the show. Anyway, the Fat Controller decides to give James another chance, and asks him to pull a goods train, to which James happily obliges. After being roasted by Thomas, have you got some bootlaces ready? James collects his trucks and sets off, but the journey is anything but smooth. The trucks, being their usual troubles themselves, do everything they can to make the journey hell for James. Slipping on their brakes and making their axles run hot, forcing James to stop each time so his crew can fix the issue. Despite their taunting, James remains determined to succeed. While climbing Gordon's hill, half of the train breaks away so James is forced to return to the bottom of the hill to retrieve the trucks. 
Hey, as a side note, this is the only time in the whole series that we see a brake van being properly used for its intended purpose. Anywho, Edward offers to help James, but he politely declines and tries once more. This time he succeeds and finishes his journey. The Fat Controller arrives with Edward and congratulates him on his efforts, saying that he's managed to keep the, quote, most troublesome trucks on the line behave. The episode ends with James being told that he more than deserves to keep his red coat. For all intents and purposes, we could have finished here. Just like in the other two-part episodes, we see an engine get into trouble and everything gets put right next time around. But the beauty of this arc is that it keeps going. Next episode, we see that Gordon and Henry are teasing James for his previous incident with the coaches. Gordon ends up boasting about being the only engine capable of pulling the express, claiming he knows the right line by instinct. I'm the only engine who can pull the express. When I'm not there, they need two engines. Think of that. I've pulled expresses for years and have never once lost my way. I seem to know the right line by instinct. Next day, we see that James is currently working as the station pilot at Natford. Gordon leaves with the express, boasting once more. Look at me now, look at me now, he puffed, and the coach has glided after him. Poop, 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 poop. Goodbye, little James, see you tomorrow. A short while later, Gordon re-enters the station trying not to be noticed. At this point, James effectively roasts Gordon three times in one scene, with his own words, I might add. Hello, Gordon. Is it tomorrow? asked James. Did you lose your way, Gordon? said James. No, it was lost for me. I was switched off the main line onto the loop. I had to go all round and back again. Perhaps it was instinct. <laughs> James is tasked with taking over the express. He does the job so well that Sir Topham offers him the opportunity to pull the express from time to time. We also find out the next day that Gordon was also impressed with how well James did. The episode ends with James earning Gordon's respect, and the two of them becoming friends. So, why is this trilogy so great? Well first of all, let's start with the mistake. Typically these types of stories only feature one mistake. In the sad story of Henry, Henry shuts himself up in a tunnel and then refuses to come out due to the rain. He then gets punished for it, and later makes up for it in the second episode. In Brake Van, Donald and Douglas make one mistake each, then make up for it by rescuing Henry in the next episode. James makes not one, not two, but three big mistakes in the first episode, the third of which happens after he's already been reprimanded. He then gets punished off screen, and then he makes up for everything in the second episode, like an absolute chad. In the third, he continues to impress us, the viewers, as well as Sir Topham Hatt, and even Gordon, earning the respect and friendship of another character. This trilogy goes above and beyond to show us all sides of James as a character. We see that he can be vain. We see that he can be grumpy and arrogant. We see his determination. We see that he's a hard worker. And we see that he's a really funny guy. <laughs> the two-part episodes do show us most of the starring character's personality traits. But the James trilogy shows us everything about the character. Which we wouldn't have seen if we'd only gotten two stories. Other episodes that he appears in might focus on one or two aspects of his character, but they never encompass all of his personality. Reverend Wilbur Audrey, who wrote the original stories for the Railway series, supposedly claimed that the book these stories featured in was his least favourite book, since he'd had to rush them. And yet, he did such a good job with them. Just like the rest of the Railway series and the classic TV series, the stories didn't play down to kids. There was always a deeper layer to them and they'd leave us with just as much to think about as the characters themselves. And the James trilogy certainly leaves us with plenty to consider. Well, I hope you all enjoyed my little overview on what I think is one of the best character arcs in Thomas and Friends. If you did enjoy this video, then be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing for similar videos in the future. Also, remember to click Toby's bell to keep up to date for when I post new content. I've been Cinders and Ashes UK, you've been awesome, and I'll see you in the next video.